Hello my friends, you're watching the Photoshop Workbench. I'm Mark Johnson. Thank you for joining me. Russell Brown from Adobe recently introduced an extension for Photoshop CC that is a complete game changer. If you love experimenting with textures even half as much as I do, you've got to check out Adobe Paper Texture Pro. This easy to load and even easier to use extension makes it possible to apply one or more textures including the pre-packaged ones from Flypaper as well as any texture collection that you own to a photograph directly inside Photoshop without ever visiting Bridge or Lightroom and going through the tedious process of opening then importing the textures into your photo document. What a time saver! With the streamlined efficiency of this process just imagine how much more creative you'll be. In today's workbench, I'll show you how Adobe Paper Texture Pro works. Now, the first thing you need to know is that Adobe Paper Texture Pro is only available to Creative Cloud subscribers. If you aren't a subscriber, keep in mind that you can still get Photoshop CC and Lightroom for $9.99 a month. To do so, visit my discounts page at msjphotography.com and click through the Adobe graphic at the bottom of the discounts list. Then choose the $9.99 per month offer on Adobe's software discounts page. Now, here's how you use it. Once you have CC, here's what you do. You go under the window menu to extensions and you choose Adobe Exchange. Adobe Exchange, by the way, is a rich place where you can find all sorts of wonderful um, plugins, extensions, and so on and so forth for Photoshop CC. This is a spot where you could get lost, but I'm going to try not to get lost. When you're in Adobe Exchange, what you want to do is search for, so go to this search field here and type in Adobe Paper textures pro now it's called adobe paper texture pro but you have to type in adobe paper textures pro here for it to pop up so it's textures plural here even though that's not the exact name of the extension all right now i'm going to tap return or enter and it's going to show me adobe paper textures pro so i can single click on this icon here and you can see that once you own photoshop cc this particular extension is free. So I can click the free button and it will download and install Adobe Paper Texture Pro for me. Once it is downloaded and, and installed, what you want to do is restart Photoshop and open up an image that you want to start experimenting with. Okay, I'm not going to close Photoshop right now. I've already installed this extension because I love it, but um, the first time you install it, Restart Photoshop, open up a picture, and then choose Window Extensions Adobe Paper Texture Pro. Okay? All right. Now, here it is. By default, if you've never used it before, it's going to look something like this. Now, if you've watched my workbenches before, you know that I'm a big fan of Flypaper Textures. Well, guess what? Flypaper Textures generously donated the textures you see right here as well as flypaper set 2 so we're in set 1 set 2 they also donated these textures that you see here this is a sampling of textures from their various collections if you own CC these textures are free to you however if you fall in love with textures the way I have and you want to purchase more textures either from flypaper or from French Kiss or for that matter from anybody you can purchase those textures and you can load them here in Adobe Paper Texture Pro. Now I have discounts for flypaper and French Kiss textures on the discounts page of my site so if you want 15 percent off any of the flypaper or French Kiss textures uh, visit my discounts page and click through the desired flypaper or French Kiss graphic. Then during checkout, be sure to enter the discount code 
associated with each graphic on my discounts page. Now, once you have the textures, and again, you're going to get these two collections right here as part of this Adobe Paper Texture Pro. This is the first one. Here's how you use it. The first thing you want to do is select the blend mode you'd like to work with. Okay, and I find that, generally speaking, multiply and overlay are the ones I choose about 90% of the time when I'm working with blend modes. So pick one of those just to begin this process. Now all you have to do is come down into this panel where you see the thumbnails and you can click. And when you do that, it automatically applies that texture in overlay mode, you can see it here and here in the layers panel, to this picture. You can see this red hairline right here indicates that that particular texture is being applied. If I don't want it to be applied, I click that same texture again and it removes it from my file. Now you're not limited to one texture. I could go to say this one, or actually let's go to this one. I'll apply that and then I could even change the blend mode here to multiply and I could apply this one here. So you can see now I've applied this one in multiply and this one in overlay and they're both accented with red here indicating that they're turned on. If I want to get rid of one, one or the other I can just click on them and they will disappear. Now if I want to adjust the blend mode, let's say I applied this one in overlay and this one in multiply, let's say I want to see what this one looks like in overlay. Here in the layers panel I can change the blend mode from multiply to overlay. Don't really like it, going right back to multiply. I can come to this one, I can change it from overlay to multiply and see what happens. I liked it better in overlay. But so you can change the blend mode after applying the texture just by popping into the layers panel right here. Now I'm going to reset this. Let's say I've, just for the sake of um, practice here, that I have also applied this one. Okay, And so I've got a lot of textures on here. I want to start over. I want to reset these. So I can go up to the flyout menu for Adobe Paper Texture Pro and I can choose reset right here and it's just going to remove all of those textures that I had applied a moment ago. Now I'm going to show you something that is really a creativity enhancer. It is this randomizer button down here. When you click randomizer, so first of all you select your blend mode. I'll go with multiply for this, okay? Let's go with multiply. Then you choose the number of textures you want to apply right here. So we'll go with two. When I click randomizer, it is going to apply two random textures from this group here with multiply blend mode. And so there they are. This is in multiply, this is in multiply. Let's say I want to see something else. I'll just click randomizer again. It's going to put two other textures on here in multiply mode. Just like that. Now let's say that I like this randomization but I'd like it to mix up the blend modes as well, not just mixing up the textures, but I want to roll the dice on the blend modes as well. So what I can do is I can check this box that says Chaos. And when I check the Chaos box and hit Randomizer, it will now select two random textures, and it may or may not put them in different blend modes. This is in Multiply, this is in Overlay. So it randomized both the blend modes and the textures when I check the chaos box. And of course, you always have the option to work with more than two textures here. You can put four or five or whatever and just see what happens. I'll click randomizer again and just see what unfolds. This is a really great way. By the way, that texture right there is just so beautiful with this picture. Oh, I love that. Oh. So <laughs> anyway, um, you can see that you can get really carried away with randomizer and with chaos. Keep in mind that these are being applied like textures would be applied if you'd gone to Bridge or Lightroom and imported them into this picture and you know gone through that rigmarole. Um, they would be applied as layers with mask. These are layers that automatically have mask. So let's say that I like some of the brightness here but not all of it. I can go to this mask 
choose the brush tool. Black is the foreground color. I'll go with uh, maybe 50% opacity. And I'm going to paint away some of the brightness from these areas right out here. So I'll say I don't want the, that much brightness right out there. So I'm just going to paint that away. So you can see, you can sit here and paint on the mask, and you can, if you're with a, a uh, reduced opacity, it's sort of like you're just gradually reducing the impact of that texture. If you're at 100% opacity, full-on black, then you're going to completely hide the texture in the area where you paint on the mask. All right, let's do an experiment, another one. <laughs> let's go up here and load Flypaper Set 2. All right. You don't have to do this for this experiment, but I just want to load up something different. Let's say that I want to colorize this image using textures. Well, what I can do here is I can look for one that has a lovely color. I'll go with this one right here. So I'm going to change my blend mode here from multiply to color. And now I'm going to click on this texture that you see right here. And it's going to apply that as a color overlay to the scene because I'm in color blend mode right here. Now I'm going to reduce the opacity by scrubby sliding over this until I get something warm but not that warm. Wow, okay, so I am, I've gone a long way with the creative process here and I've done it very quickly thanks to this wonderful extension. Now, um, let's see here. Also, bear in mind, the randomizer <laughs> and chaos, they're going to work, or actually randomizer is going to work with color here, so you could have it apply multiple textures in color blend mode, so you're going to get even uh, more color blends out of this. And also, something else to keep in mind. Let me, uh, let me just switch that off for a moment. Let's say I love the textures that are happening here. Actually, you know what, here's what we're going to do. We're going to reset everything. We're going to go to Randomizer and Chaos, and I'm just going to click, let it apply a couple things. I might have to do this a couple times to get to a great example. I really don't like that at all <laughs> right there. So let's just keep trying for a moment. I'm going to go a couple more times, because what I'm looking for here is a situation where I like the textures, but I'm just not happy with the colors. And when I, when I arrive at that, I want to show you that you can easily control. Let's go back to the... Uh, set one here. I think I might have quicker odds of succeeding with this. By the way, I need to reset everything there before I randomize because I switched texture sets. Alright, there we go. Let's say I love these textures and the way they are applying to this picture, but I'm not happy with the color that's going on in here. Well, if I don't want the color from this texture, I just want the texture itself, I can come up here to the black and white icon in the adjustments panel, hold down Option or Alt, and click it. And then I can check this box that says Use Previous Layer to Create Clipping Mask. I'll press OK, and now what it's done is it has drained the color from this texture right here, leaving behind the texture but none of the color. Or if I want to change this color, what I could do is hold down Option and click here on Hue Saturation. Again, I'm going to use Previous Layer to create Clipping Mask, and I'll press OK. This time, if I want to cycle the colors of that texture, I can simply move the Hue slider and cycle through the color possibilities here. don't really like any of those, so I'm going to click the Trash Can icon here and get rid of that layer. But that is possible as well. Final thing I'm going to show you here, and I'll go ahead and just reset this is that you can load up your own texture collection. So say you purchase something from French Kiss or something else from Flypaper, you can go to this flyout and choose Load Texture Folder. Then you can find the texture that you want, and I'm working here with French Kiss textures. I love their uh, crackler textures. I'll press OK, or I'll press Open, and it's going to load those textures into this panel so that I can work with a different texture collection. Amazing! Now keep in mind that if you have a folder full of hundreds of textures or super high res textures, they're going to take some time to load, so just be careful. <laughs> Try to keep your texture uh, folders to a minimum so that it doesn't take forever to load here. Now now that I've done this, let's go ahead and just um, let's go with 
multiply mode. Let's pop this one on there. And then let's go with maybe overlay mode and let's pop this one on. And that got a little bit too bright there, so I'll back down the opacity with the scrubby sliders. In fact, I don't like the way this looks at all, but that's okay. <laughs> you get the idea. Also, uh, one final comment here. Adobe Paper Texture Pro automatically scales the textures to match the proportions of the base image. So that is another huge time saver. So even if you're working on a super high res file or a super low res file, this extension will do the scaling for you. So you no longer have to open from Lightroom or Bridge. You no longer have to copy and paste or you know import into your picture. And you no longer have to scale or transform your textures. You can get a lot more creative and you can thank Russell Brown from Adobe for making that happen. Thanks for being with me on today's Photoshop Workbench. Have a lot of fun with this. It's absolutely pure entertainment. Take care.